A helping hand came in the form of some cuddly little friends, and Suze Gray has the story. We'll make a memory out of it. This is Joshua. When you look at him, you see a vibrant, energetic, adorable six-year-old boy. What you don't see is the battle this brave young soul has faced. The diagnosis was pretty blunt. We were told pretty much he had two to three days to live if we didn't operate. At the age of five, Joshua was diagnosed with an extremely rare brain tumour called pineoblastoma. The risk with his particular rare tumour as they had to go in through the cerebrum is that he may have a stroke, he may lose motor skills, he may lose hearing, he may lose cognitive ability. You don't have much of a choice, you just have to do it and you have to sign a form and then take your child into surgery whilst he goes to sleep and you wonder if you'll ever see them the same again. Five is very little. How, how did Joshua take the, the information? Was he able to understand? The hospital teaches us we've got to be very blunt uh, and when I explain to him, you know, we're about to try and save your life. We're going to go through hell to do this. I asked him, are you scared? And he said, no, I've got you, Mum, I've got you, Dad. And he, by his own words, we're going to beat the baddie in my head. Love you. Love you. I just felt like a headache and the baddie come. Was it scary for you? Uh, the, the pain patch felt real scary. But I managed to survive through all of it. Despite a terrifying prognosis, Joshua's operation late last year was a huge success. I bumped into the neurosurgeon the night after and uh, he told me that the neuro team was absolutely ecstatic, that they had nicknamed our boy Little Miracle Man. Uh, they'd never seen a case from this type of tumour where the patient was walking and talking immediately after the operation. But what we often forget about children fighting cancer is that the disease itself isn't the only challenge they face. I am really nervous now. I've got up in front of the class as I got back from hospital. They just make jokes about my hat because I don't have any hair. Returning to school after time in hospital can be fraught with issues, from bullying to anxiety. And that's where Camp Quality's puppets come in. <laughs> Our puppets visit preschools and primary schools all around Australia, delivering cancer education. We help to break down some myths and misconceptions. It makes a huge difference because it helps to reduce the likelihood of exclusion or bullying. The main thing we're talking about is that I have a leukaemia, which is a type of cancer, and I'm trying to tell the kids that you can't catch cancer from someone else because it's not like the cold or the flu and that, you know, it's okay sometimes to, to look like this from the medicine. Joshua was watching the puppet show and when Kylie uh, takes off her hat and reveals to her classmates that she has lost her hair, uh, Josh also did the same thing. And the fact that he had the courage and the braveness to do that is just so wonderful. And tonight, as Camp Quality celebrates the huge milestone of reaching five million Australian children with their puppets, Little Joshua once again demonstrated the wonderful influence they've had on his recovery. You are an amazing person. Do you know that? You're, and I love your haircut. Too. You do. <laughs> oh, well, well, I think it looks pretty good. On you. This is my fight song. You are intrinsically tied to your child's happiness, and just the smiles that you see day to day from these little things. They bring you a happiness that you can't otherwise get. The puppet show that they bring to the kids at school really helps put all the kids in that, you know, teamwork, caring for someone mood, and we've just been blessed as a result. Yeah.